Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. This is Ingvar Jónsson, Freedom Master from Iceland, and I hope you're not tired of Alpha Zero games. I'm certainly not. Still fascinated by the games and uh, the whole story. And I got some bad news, though. It's another Queen's Indian and another game where Alpha Zero is white, but with the games it's producing, uh, we don't mind. So let's see. Uh, this is becoming like a... A <laughs> theoretical battle, but this time around we see bishop b4 check. We've seen at least two games with bishop e7 here, uh, followed by castling and d5, the pawn sacrifice. But here, um, stockfish goes another route with bishop b4 check. Bishop comes to d2, bishop back to e7, um, and actually, the bishop is worse off here than uh, on c1 because we usually want to play b3 and bishop b2 so bishop d2 is not necessarily a move that white wants so black can lose his tempo with bishop b4 back to e7 knight c3 c6 this is actually quite common e4 and now d5 and this has been played in high profile games such as anand against carlson in 2014 and mamed yarov against krishuk 2017 but here we see uh, a rare move in the position e5 by uh, alpha zero which uh, stockfish answered with knight to e4 castles finishing development logical chess but now um, stockfish goes on the prowl once again bishop a6 eyeing this pawn on c4 but white protects but black can capture a pawn and Stockfish can't resist, takes on c3 and now takes on c4. And now once again we see a pawn sacrifice by alpha zero. It plays b4. It lets black keep this extra pawn on c4. Which black tries to hold on to with b5 and after knight d2 black castles. But once again, once again. Look at this bishop, it's on a6. What do we have here? Pawns on light squares, what do they do? They restrict this bishop. What do we have here? Pawns on what? On black squares. And they control the black squares here and prevent black from freeing himself. So let's see, knight e4. Yet again, threatening some black square domination. Bishop e7, uh, queen to g4. Uh, another thing I noticed is Alpha Zero tends to lock things down on one wing and then attack on the other one. And we'll see it yet again in this game. Uh, more or less, um, Alpha Zero is going to keep things under control on the queen side, this side of the board here. Queen side! And attack on the king side. Knight c5, offering the trade. But once again, this. Uh, emphasizes how bad this bishop is and we're going to see yet another game where stockfish is left with a dead piece bishop on b7 a5 trying to uh, undermine this pawn chain but of course uh, white just protects with a3 we have takes takes and takes takes some exchanges and alpha zero is still down upon but Tremendous uh, positional compensation. First and foremost, the horrible bishop on a b7. And also, white has some space because of the advanced pawns here on e5 and c5. Queen d3 was played, but once again, alpha 0 just protects the bishop, keep things under lock and key on the queen side. There's nothing to be had there. But, Stockfish tries. Rook a8, maybe... Uh, it can disturb the force here with uh, rook a3. <laughs> Disturbance in the force. But no, h4. And here, um, stock is kind of a board's mission because on rook a3, let's actually just see that move. We'll just play bishop e4 and the queen must go back. And attacking the c3 bishop hasn't really brought any dividends, so black needs to retreat. So one maybe wonders why Rook a8 was played in the first place, but okay, maybe to control the a5, and now queen d8. But uh, alpha zero keeps rolling, bishop e4, 
using his space and uh, attacking on the king side, bringing the bishop to a better diagonal. And uh, not just king g2. Solid move, the king is slightly better because we're increasing the scope of the rook. So, you know, I like that uh, it's easy to understand the chess sometimes. I mean, there will be moves that we uh, will need time and, and maybe we don't understand, but in general, uh, the plays are human like. It's it's uh, much easier to to explain than like a, a, a regular engine versus engine uh, match. So, queen h5, we have a mate, well, yeah, mate threat here on h7 because we will take take here and then queen h8 mate so g6 is the forced response more or less queen g4 and now bishop f8 was played note that uh, move like h5 queen f3 you always have to worry about g4 and uh, yeah we would have to protect the h4 pawn first and now that i think of it maybe we can have a radical rook here so that uh, once we put the rook on h3 play g4 Black takes, queen takes. Now we have protected the bishop here with a rook on h3. If black were to play rook a3. Slightly off tangent uh, thoughts there, but bishop f8 was played. And now Harry, Harry comes to h5. Rook g8, queen h4. Another theme actually in a lot of the games. The push of the h pawn. Harry. So queen eight, queen e7. And we see that black is just on the defensive, can't really do much. White even offers the uh, the trade of queens here, down the pawn. But black can't really do that. I uh, hadn't really thought of it that much, but like if we take, we, we will have another dead bishop. I mean, this is controlled, this is controlled, this is controlled. And you might think about f4 next. Let's say something like this, maybe just f4. And this guy is just toast. And meanwhile, notice the bishops, the white bishops, controlling all the entry squares for the rook on the default. So just everything is under control. This is just beautiful chess. So didn't trade the queens. Instead, went queen e8. And now rook h1 from alpha zero. Threatening perhaps some evil things on the h file now. Takes in mate if you take with the h pawn. But rook d7 was played, and after takes, of course, Stockfish took with the f pawn. That's forced. Now the queen came back to h4. So it's like white is keeping the spine on the position, uh, and it's it's funny. There, there's no rush somehow, and and for several moves, Stockfish uh, is evaluating this as a zero point zero zero. But uh, 0, 0.00 ain't zero, zero anymore. There's a new zero in town. Alpha Zero. Played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. La la Alpha Zero. La la. There's no zero. Okay. I uh, went off tangent there, but. Bishop B2. Now we will see Alpha Zero. Take a look at this. Bring the bishop from C3 to E3, where it stands slightly better and controls the board. Maybe Stockfish uh, didn't have to play c3 here. But nonetheless, it's uh, all the control is with white, bishop e3. And now, alpha zero just goes and collects this pawn. And there's nothing that black can do. Queen e2, bishop f8. If, if we uh, maybe attack the pawn on e5, too late. Bishop takes g6. This is winning if you take. Queen takes. So, bishop f8. And now, alpha 0 just collected this pawn. Stockwist tries to score. But now, the material is equal. And, and actually, when we think about it, the pawn of c4 didn't really matter. White keeps the bind here. This is one move I couldn't really understand. Rook c1. But, let's see what happens. The, the pawn on e5 is attacked. So, naturally... We don't protect it. <laughs> we attack on d8. So what's going on here? Yeah, of course. Now we see the point of uh, rook c1. If bishop takes e5, well, it, it doesn't matter. We're up a rook here. So 
So I still don't understand Rock C1, but uh, yeah, Bishop G5 and uh, Rook F8. And now we play F4, protect the pawn. But we got the bishop outside the pawn chain first. And now bishop f6. And this is just, you know, this is Capablanca rule, man. <laughs> Alpha Zero doesn't know about or understand Capablanca, but this is what Capablanca said. Put the pawns on the opposite square of your bishop. That's what white, that's what white did. That's what black didn't do. And what, what happened? Black has a stupid, completely shut down bishop here. And even here, white can give up the pawn. He's actually down a pawn at the moment, but he's completely winning because of the dead bishop on b7. Rook a7. Rook f7, and now white regains the pawn, and he's just completely winning. Completely winning. This is beautiful. End game, what do you do? You bring the king. This king is going to walk to e5 one way or the other. g4, bishop c8. Just rook a8. Everything is tied down now. The rook is stuck here protecting this. And this is already pinned. King e3. And then, I mean h5. This just shows that Stockfish thinks it's losing. So uh, it starts playing moves like this. But even if you try not to give up material like king e7. We just bring the king. And there's nothing you can do. Rook e7 or something. Just g5. And we will push this pawn king here and push a pawn. For instance, bishop e4, rook g7, king f6. And you can't stop this pawn. So yeah, after h5, we don't really have to look at the rest. Where this up a pawn and uh, has a huge uh, positional advantage as well. Wins another pawn. Now we're up two pawns. And for a computer, this is uh, easily winning. He even abandons the h5 pawn because we just... Picking up b5 when we want. Uh, king a5, protecting the b4 pawn, and then we take on b5. And Stockfish uh, can actually resign here, but uh, it played down a few more moves. King f7, bishop e2, and resignation, another beautiful positional game. So many ideas you can learn from, and uh, I hope you did. Uh, I'm really enjoying these games. Uh, and uh, I'll keep going, you know. Uh, there's so much stuff in these games. And uh, I think they should be shared with anyone. With everybody. So thanks once again for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.